How we doing, everybody? Um, as Coach said, my name is Ryan Cortez. I'm the D-line coach here, also run game coordinator. Um, we're going to talk about our run game fundamentals. Okay. Um, so our defense, philosophy-wise, we want to stop the run. That's the number one thing we want to do. We want to get people in predictable situations, right? So if we can stop you on first and second down and get you in pass rush situations, that w that's what we're going to do. But we're not going to allow people to run the ball on us. That's our number one philosophy. How we do that, right, it starts with our guys up front. Okay, our front four guys, right, that's the heartbeat of what we do and how we stop people on the run. How we're going to do that up front is we're going to get knockback. Okay, reason why we do that, okay, we want to play on the offense side of the line of scrimmage. Okay, that's going to help us or help us with that. The, the back is going to make cuts in the backfield. That's going to be huge. The more cuts we can make the running back make in the backfield, that's less yards he's gaining. Running backs want to make cuts when they're at the line of scrimmage or beyond. Okay, if they're making cuts in the backfield, it's giving time for our guys to flow and get to the football. Okay, knockback, it's also going to help protect yourself and teammates. Okay, so yeah, by playing through a man, okay, so we're not going to penetrate through a gap, we're going to penetrate through our man. By doing that, you're protecting the guys behind you. Okay, pretty much every defense I've ever seen or been a part of, right, linebackers are the guys making the tackles, right? So let's protect those dudes and let them go get tackles, all right? But also on the flip side, I'm also protecting myself. So if I get a heavy veer block by, say I'm a DT and I get a heavy veer block, okay? If I change, right, that, that aiming point, point for, the, for the tackle, right, that's gonna be a less violent block, okay? Because he now has to change his angle to get to my hip. All right, does that make sense there? We're also gonna try to constrict gaps all right, that's going to limit vertical run length. Okay, if we take away interior gaps, again, we're making ball go east and west. Again, ball's not going vertical, they're not gaining yards vertically, right? Ball can run east and west all day, and we're going to, we're going to be happy with that. It's going to also help us bonus, okay? We're going to play in our gap, we're going to play out of our gap. Heard coach talk about gap and a half, right? I've heard it gap and a half, I've heard it two gap. We're pretty much going to two gap all the time, all right? It allows our D linemen to make more plays, right? And again, it's, we're playing thick on people and it's gonna help protect people behind us. And then also we're gonna change numbers, all right? We can, we can hide maybe every once in a while if we don't have a hat in the box, we can hide that by two gapping with our D linemen up front. Forgot I got the handy dandy clicker thanks to Coach Shields here. All right, so first thing we talk about every camp, whether that's fall or spring, Okay, we, we revisit stance. Okay, we're not going to be able to do what we want to do if our stance is jacked up. All right, so for us, stance, right, we want to get our feet in the armpits. Okay, we're always going to have our hand closest to the football down. So our inside hand is going to be down. Okay, we want toe to instep stagger. All right, so I want my toe, right, I don't want to be super staggered, right. We might have a little bit different for our DNs, but I want to have some stagger so I'm ready to take a step. Okay, I want my shoulder blade squeezed. Okay, sink hips. Okay, we'll get to film here in a second, but I want to tap my knee. The reason we do that is to give you an aiming point of where to put your hand when you get down in your stance. All right, um, I want to set my hand in front of that foot. Again, we're tapping that knee so I know where to place the hand in front of my foot. All right, I want at least 60% of my weight forward, if not more. All right, that's going to get me in a mentality to where I'm going to, I'm going to want to take a first step forward. If we're too far back on our haunches, right, I might take a lateral step. Right, as we said, we want to get knockoff, so I'm trying to charge through a guard. All right, so we want to have that mentality, and our, our stance is going to help us do that. I want to keep my shoulders square, and I want my butt above my head in my stance, as we see here, right? My butt's going to be above my head, okay? And I want my offhand in a, in a strike position. Everybody's going to look different with that. Some guys are going to have it up here. Some guys are going to have it low. I prefer low because that emphasizes a low hand strike. If I have my hand up high, right, more times than not, I'm going to have a higher hand strike. So if you lower that off hand, it's going to help get you on a lower trajectory with your strike. All right, so this will be what we look like when we do our drill progression for stance. Tell the guys, get your feet in your armpit. We'll be in a left-handed stance in this scenario here. Tell them, get, uh, get your toe to instep, so they'll slide that foot back. So again, we're in a left-handed stance, left stance, so left foot's going to be back. 
We'll get down in what we call power position. And then we're going to tap the knee, right? Giving ourselves a landmark of where to drop that, that hand out in front. So as we look in the front, right, I should not be able to see that foot there right behind my arm. Okay, so I think that's a pretty good job. Maybe he could have it a little bit wider. All right. And then as we look at both scenarios here, we, we got the, the butt above the head. Okay, and then we want to get that hand out in a strike position. Okay, so we we're, have we're, our low hand ready to strike. Okay, sometimes you might have guys that have jacked up stances, right? Some of that's because they probably got their hand in the middle of their body, right? Some guys maybe just aren't as flexible. But if you have guys that are like in stance like this and they're all jacked up, okay, tell them to get in a four point stance so they can feel their shoulder square and just lift that off hand up two inches. And that's what, you're, that's what you want right there. That's what your stance should look like. Get in a four point stance so you can feel what it feels to have shoulder square and then lift that off hand up. That's what stance we're gonna look like there, all right? We'll move to our next part of our drill progression, okay? We call it strike from the knees. We do this drill every single day. This is our version of a get off drill, all right? We're working on our eyes and we're working on our hands, okay? We'll also be getting in our body posture. We always wanna play with the flat back, all right? So we're working our body posture on this as well. Coaching point, I want tight hands, all right? I wanna play in handcuffs. I wanna be wrist to wrist. I want my hands touching when I do this drill. When we talk about all of our stuff, we're always going to talk in extremes to get what we want in game day. Okay? So if I talk about wrist to wrist and touching my hands when I strike, more than likely on game day I'm going to get what I want. All right? But again, we're going to talk in extremes so we can emphasize that. All right? I want my thumbs out. Again, I hear a lot of guys talk about thumb up. In a real situation, you coach thumb up, more than likely that thumb's going in. My elbow rotates out. I'm in a weaker position. Get the thumb out, get the elbows in the framework that's going to get you in a nice strong position. Okay? I already talked about it. I want my elbows in. Get it inside your framework. You're stronger that way. I want to dig my fingertips in. I want to grab. Okay? I want to grab. Don't place your hands on them. Grab. That's going to help you get control. And then again, we're, we're, we're training our eyes. Okay? Eyes are something you got to train all the time. Okay? So I want to laser beam my eyes where I'm striking. Okay? It's going to help me be consistent with my hand placement, okay? So we set up this drill, okay? We'll have, you can do it however you want. Um, there's a couple different ways that we, we set this drill up. Here we got agiles. Agiles are nice because it usually says like agile on it. So it gives you like something to punch, right? It gives them something they can look at and say, okay, A. I'm gonna look at the A, I'm gonna strike the A every single time, all right? A lot of times when you first do this drill, you're gonna be coaching these guys a lot more than you're coaching them. Okay, if you have the agile, you want to get it flush on the leg. Okay, flush on the leg so they have a good, strong striking surface. All right. Another thing, in all of our drills, we have our guys that aren't taking a rep coaching. Okay, so they're taking mental reps when they're not rep taking a real rep, right? Coach the guys up. You as a coach, you only have one set of eyes. So that means I can only coach one dude at a time. So there's two guys in this clip that aren't getting coached by me, but they better be getting coached by somebody else, right? Every single rep needs to be coached, right? So they can get the correction, all right? Uh, I'm gonna go to the next one here. So that would be the setup, okay? Coach is gonna be in the middle. You can do it with two, three, four, doesn't matter, depends on numbers. Whatever you feel is, is good for you, all right? The big thing I like here in this clip, right? We see the hand strain, right? You wanna white knuckle this drill. You wanna freaking squeeze the pad. All right, you want to white knuckle it. All right, so I, I love that. Now, I'd like to see him with a little bit more thumb out, right? That's a thumb up. I want to get him in a more thumb out position. Okay, the other thing I don't like about this, right, see how vertical we are, right? In, in a second, I'll get to it. We want to be in that flat back posture. But elbows are in the framework, right? And I can see him straining to squeeze the bag. That's awesome. That's what I want there. Okay, any drill work that we do from the ground, we're always gonna do it simulating ball. So if you got a ball on a stick, that's awesome. We use a foot. So in this drill, coach is there. My foot's out on the ball, said hit, right? My foot moves, we should be striking. I'm not engaging my hips, nothing like that. I am literally just getting my hands to the bag as fast as I can, right? This is a get off drill for us. Okay, so this is more of the posture that I'm looking for when we do strike from the knees, okay? 
Again, this is a little bit different setup. We use a different pad, so if you don't have Agiles available, you can use an arm shield, right? I actually like those for hand placement. So I'll change the pad based off the day just to emphasize something different. Okay, it also freshens up the drill, keeps it, keeps it fresh for them, keeps them locked in. So you're doing the same drill, but you're just doing it a little bit different way, right? Keeps the guys locked in, all right? And again, the, the, the hand shields are nice because I have a bottom part of the bag that forces me to get that thumb out position, okay? And I like that, that's really good. Again, change the pad, get a little different look with it, okay? But same setup, no change. We're just getting the, the hands to the bag as fast as we can. And again, we're gonna be in that flat back posture, right? We wanna play in a flat back. We don't wanna give a chest. All right, so right from strike from the knees, again, this is a drill we do every single day. We call it typewriter. Now we're adding in our first step, okay? It's the same drill. I'm coaching my hands, I'm coaching my eyes, I'm coaching, coaching posture, right? But now I'm adding in the first step. So we're doing it out of a stance. So after about day one, day two, right, I'll stop doing stance and then we're coaching stance in this drill. So if somebody's still got a jacked up stance, I'll get it coached up during this drill. All right, so all the same coaching points from strike from the knees, right, for hands, elbows, eyes, all that stuff. Now I'm just coaching first step. I'm looking for a two to four inch step. All right, two to four inch step. If guys don't understand what a two to four inch step is, it's a two inch step. If they don't understand what that is, tell them pick it up, put it down. Eventually they'll get to where you want them to get. Again, talk in extremes to get what you want. Right, try to relate it to them as best you can. Give them a bunch of different ways to learn it. And then again, everyone's coaching, okay? This drill's great because you can go straight from strike to the knees. There is no transition at all, right? You go straight from strike from the knees right to typewriter, okay? So you're not wasting any time, okay? Now we're in a stance. Again, you're gonna end up probably coaching these guys a ton, all right? As I'm on the agile, you gotta use agile for this one, but as I'm on the agile, right, that guy's gotta lean on him. He's gotta give him pressure. Okay, you don't want to be a fish and be wobbling around. Again, you want to give him a good striking surface because he's going to be leaning on the pad. All right, the reason we want the head on the pad is because if I want to make sure that I keep my pad level down, right? I don't want my head raising up through the agile pad. Okay, if this is my butt and this is my head, I just want to pivot. I just want to pivot. My hips should sink and my head should stay in one spot. All right, again, we're working that first step and then getting into our good pad level. All right, same setup, okay, getting off on coach's snap, right? So essentially, what did we get to from here? Strike from the knees. We're just adding in that first step, okay, and working on getting great pad level, okay? So all the same coaching points, and again, our guys are coaching. His eyes are down, coaching hands. His eyes are down, coaching hands. Their eyes are down, coaching their first step. So if I don't see something, they get it corrected. And then when they're taking a rep, they're also refreshing it for themselves and taking a mental rep as well. All right, so again, go right to typewriter. We're looking for that nice tight first step, sinking the hips. Here's a great picture from the back of what we're looking for with that first step. Nice tight first step, right? Nice tight first step, two to four inches. Hips sink, okay, that's gonna get us nice bend, good pad level, okay? Let's look at the guy over here on the, on the right, All right? When I take a big step, notice how big of a step he takes. I got a clear room somehow. So to get my knee through, that's gonna pick my chest up. Now I'm playing tall. Now I'm getting knocked back instead of me knocking back in the old lineman. Okay, so I gotta take a nice tight first step so that I can keep my pad level down. All right, and then again, hands and all that stuff, we're coaching that, right? But big emphasis here is first step. And same thing other way. Okay, now we're gonna move into our feet. Now we're gonna actually do the knockoff piece of our knockoff, right? Okay, we're gonna work our base, we're gonna work our feet, and again, we're gonna keep that nice flat back body posture. All right, coaching points. I want a wide base. When I get narrow as a D lineman, that's when O linemen are gonna twist and turn me and put me on the ground. I'm not very effective when I'm on the ground. So I wanna keep a wide base so that I have balance. I wanna grab grass. Talk about cutting the grass with my feet. I don't want to be a baby giraffe and take huge, big steps. I want to cut grass with my cleats, right? I should be trimming the top of the, top of the turf or the grass with the bottom of my cleats, right? Don't pick, the, don't pick your cleats up a ton. Bending, I want to be 90, 90, 90. Hips, 
knees and ankles, all right? I want to finish with my hands above my eyes. That means I'm lifting that man up, right? I don't want to push straight through. I want to lift. I want to change that spine angle of that man, right? If we can get him in what I call reverse C, a lot of times I'm winning that rep, okay? And then get on your insteps. Get as many cleats in the ground as you can. All right, so we set it up here. There's a couple different ways we'll do it to emphasize different things, okay? But pretty easy setup. One guy's on offense, one guy's on defense. We'll get locked up tight. Okay, when you first do it, you might have guys start with their hands fully extended, get them lock, locked up tight. Again, we got to explode out. All right, let's watch the man in the middle. This is a really good rep. Again, we're 90, 90, 90, hips, ankles, and knees. Okay, we want to start with our hands and our eyes on the same plane. Okay, if my eyes are above my hands, now I'm going to have to stop my feet to get what I want with a spine angle change. So I need to get my hands and eyes on the same plane. That way I'm lifting and changing that guy's spine angle. So as we watch this rep here, right, we're exploding and lifting up, right? My feet are grabbing grass. My feet are grabbing grass. Okay, that's a good rep, right? We notice here we got narrow base. And again, we're not going to be as powerful because we're not getting any lift. We're almost pushing down in that rep there, all right? This is really what we're looking for right here. This is a really good rep, right? I want to get this guy in this position right here. That's beautiful. If we can get old Lyman in that position, we're going to win every single rep. All right? And again, we're knocking off, right? Hands finish above eyes, and we're grabbing grass. Okay, this is one variation that we'll do. We put the agile between their legs. This is going to emphasize base so their feet can't get narrow. Right? Put the agile there, help them keep their feet wide. Nothing different, right? We're coaching the same stuff, only adding the agile so that we emphasize something different. Okay, I don't have any film of this, but I have a wrapped up towel. I taped a towel, it's about this wide, okay? I'll put it in between their elbows. That way we're forcing them to squeeze the towel in their elbows to keep their hands tight so we're not getting flared elbows, okay? Same drill, adding a little something to emphasize something different, okay? And again, it keeps it fresh. It's the same drill, but it's different for the players. Okay, now we're doing disadvantage knockoff, okay? Now I've been reached. Every single D lineman that's ever played football and will play football will get reached at some point in time. So now we gotta get our hips back over the top so that we can play two gaps, all right? So nothing changed, feet-based posture, right? I'm knocking the man off, now I'm just adding a steer. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna have leverage on one shoulder and now I'm steering, okay? Same principles apply. When I steer, I have a post arm, pin arm. My post arm needs to go on a 45 because I want to get some lift. I shouldn't see shoulders going like this. Shoulders need to lift. I need to get him in this position. Soften that shoulder, right? If I get him in this position, I'm going to win the rep, all right? And then my pin arm, so that's my backside hand, I'm just taking my elbow to my belly button, right? That's going to get his shoulders open. Now I can find the ball through his armpit, all right? So again, easy transition from knockoff. Now we just do disadvantage. Get a guy heavy on a shoulder, okay? And again, it's knockoff, but now I'm disadvantaged. One thing you'll notice, these reps are pretty good. I never want to lose ground. I don't want to go lateral. Everything we do is going vertical. If I get a vertical base block, it's going to be straight vertical, right? If I'm getting reached one way or the other, I'm still going vertical, but it might be on a 45. It's all about knocking the man back, okay? So as we're doing this drill, we don't want to lose ground to get my hips over the top. I want to knock him off and steer my hips over the top, all right? So as we play this clip, this is a pretty good rep right here, right? We're getting vertical, we're steering, and eventually my hips will get over the top, again, allowing me to play two gaps, all right? And all the stuff we talk about in knockoff still applies. Let me get to a rep here. Okay, this is what we don't want. Right? Notice what we got going on with our feet here. Pretty much everybody's doing it. Losing ground, losing ground, going laterally. That's not what you want to see. We're going vertical through the shoulder. It's going to be a 45, but everything we do is going vertical. All right? We do not want to lose ground. When we're losing ground, that means old linemen are taking us for a ride. All right? Okay, phase drill. Phase drill is our all-encompassing drill. 
we take it from the ground all the way into knockoff. Okay, so it goes through all the phases of our knockoff. All right, so we're coaching bend, we're coaching hands, we're coaching first step, eyes, feet. It all applies now. This is as close to a live rep as we'll get in Indy. Okay, so if you got these big orange balls that a lot of people use for cut blocks, right, this is when we're, we're going to use them for this. Okay, we want to have these guys low. Okay, I like the big ball because it actually gets lower and the guy doesn't have to bend as much. Okay, but it forces them to play low. The ball is awesome because it can tell you pretty much anything about the rep. All right, if my hands are high, my hands are going to roll over the top of the ball and I'm not going to be able to take the rep. Okay, if my eyes are above my hands when I strike, my feet are going to stop and I'm going to have to lift. Right, so I'm forcing myself to bend. I'm forcing myself to laser beam my eyes. I'm forcing myself to have great hands, great feet, right? It's a great drill for guys, and it's awesome because you're using a ball, less contact with other people, right? So we're not banging all the time. We're doing it on a ball so we're not hitting the crap out of each other, right? And we can do it with not, without helmets on, okay? It's an awesome drill to be able to do. We do it pretty much every day. It's also a mentality drill. So like when we go to like inside run, I like doing this drill right before we go to it. Get, it, get the blood flowing, get the mentality going. Okay, so let's look at 55 here. Okay, it's a pretty good rep. Again, forces him to bend. Okay, nice tight first step. Hands are on the bottom half of the ball. I'd like to see him a little bit tighter, but that's the idea. Again, we're in flat back. As we grab grass, eyes are going to finish above hands. It's a great rep. Let's watch 71, right? Eyes are above hands at contact. Feet are going to stop. Then I have to stop my feet to lift the ball. We're going to get our butt kicked on that rep, playing with too high to pad level, right? Go to the next rep here, okay? Again. I want to get my hands there as fast as I can. Don't load your hands. Your power comes from your feet. It doesn't come from your punch. It comes from your feet. Okay, so again, eyes are above hands. He's going to have to lift with his hips. Same thing over here with 75. Let's get to another good one here. Okay, let's watch this one, right? Hands are above the ball. Going to roll over the top. Can't do the drill, right? Hands are above the ball. Thumbs are in. Same thing we talked about before. Right, eyes are above hands at contact. We're gonna have to stop the feet to lift. We'll go to the next one here, this one's good. Okay, let's watch this. Let's watch this right here, okay? Really good rep. Like to see maybe a little bit more bend. Hands are pretty good, right? We're on the bottom half of the ball, okay? But pretty good, right? He's able to play with the flat back, grab grass, Feet don't stop, hands finish above eyes. Really good rep. And then down here, right, we got the hands above the ball, ball rolls down, can't take the rep. Okay, it's a really great drill. Again, you're setting mentality and it can tell you a lot about your rep right away. Okay, now we got to disengage, right? We've, we've talked about how to engage a blocker, now we got to get off of a blocker. All right? So, now we're working, ripping off blocks. We call this steer rip, okay? I gotta have hips. My hips generate power when I rip, okay? Hips generate power when I rip. I wanna stay square. If I'm steering and my hips flare out, right, that's gonna make it really hard to rip back here, and it's now I'm making myself a one gap player as well. I gotta keep my hips square as I steer, okay? I wanna finish with my hand behind my helmet, right? If I don't finish there, I'm not breaking hands off. Okay, we talk about in our room, holding is not an actual penalty in football, right? It doesn't get called. There's holding on every play. So holding is not an excuse for not making a tackle. Not getting off a block is why you didn't make the tackle, right? So I want to finish with my hands behind my helmet so I can break his hands off of me, all right? And then as we talked about, right, post arm, pin arm, same applies, okay? One way you can do this is from the ground to help them understand how to get their hip through. Um, it's good for, for younger guys. All right, again, I want to push on a 45, so this isn't a great picture of that. 
But again, finish with the hand behind the helmet. Now, with this drill, I don't want to catch myself and fall on my chest as you're seeing. I want to fall and land flush. That's good. That means I got my hip through. Okay, so he should be falling right on his left hip. Okay, that means he threw his hip. That means we're going to have a violent rip. All right, let's get to some on our feet. We can do it with one arm, okay, or two arms. Here we got one arm, so we're just incorporating our post arm. Again, this is a great picture of what we want with our post arm, right? Lift up on a 45, we've softened that shoulder. That's beautiful, okay? Finish with the hand behind the helmet. One thing I don't love, right, we wanna get those hips involved. It's gonna be a way more violent rip if I involve the hips, all right? But again, just a little bit different variation of the drill to keep it fresh, all right? Again, easy setup. You can go right from knockoff and do this if you want, okay, because it's pretty much the same setup. All right, let's watch 98 down here. It's a good rep. Keep the hips square. As I knock them off, open up that shoulder, get those hips around, finish with the helmet or hand behind the helmet. That's a nice rep right there. 94, really good rep. Keep the hips square, get the hips around, right? Love it. Really good job, right? Need to have violent rip, get the hands off. This is what we don't want. Right? Don't flare your hips. Stay square. Stay square. Stay square. All right? 24, flaring his hip out. Keep your hips square. Get to the next drill here, okay? Now we do rip retrace. This is our version of a tackling drill, okay? It's pretty low contact. Again, we don't have to bang all the time. We do enough of that um, when we go against the offense. All right, so we're working tackling, we're working ripping off blocks. All right, big thing with this, I want to rip back through the line of scrimmage. So as we saw there, I'm getting my hips back around when I rip, okay? It's the old, right, meet him where he's going, okay? So as I'm moving this way, the running back's going this way. So I got to rip back through the line of scrimmage where I came from to meet him at that intersect point. So we're working that in this drill, all right? So... We have a running back, we got an O lineman, we got our D lineman. This side's gonna go this way, this side's gonna go that way. All right? As we watch, right, hips are square. We've gotta have some anticipation, finding the ball carrier through the armpit. This is an awesome job by this young man. Rip, retrace back through the line of scrimmage, and I wanna finish with my head across. All right? That means I beat him to the spot, got to the spot before he did. All right? Gotta have some anticipation, okay? And again, I gotta snap those hips around, right? We're not snapping the hip and getting back through the line of scrimmage, okay? Coaches here are acting as cones, okay? They gotta rip and get back to you, right? They gotta rip and get back to you. Get back through the line of scrimmage, all right? This is an okay rep. He goes lateral. Again, I wanna get back through the line of scrimmage. Notice he can't get his head across. Another great example of why you don't flare your hips, right? Another great example why you don't flare your hips. Okay, my angles are off. I gotta turn a whole 180 to get back to the line of scrimmage. Okay, keep your hips square, give yourself a chance. All right, we'll move into some film here. Okay, um, one of the big things that I think is a common misconception about D-line play is that you need like massive guys, right, to be able to knock old linemen off, off the ball, all right? I think you need guys that want to do it, you got to have guys that can bend, and you got to have guys that have good feet, right? The big one though, they got to want to do it, right? You find a guy that's cool with just freaking knocking the guy off the ball, you're going to be really happy as a D-line coach, all right? And the first two clips I got are maybe a little bit of the extreme extreme, the 1% of reps, but if you can get knock off on a play, you are going to dramatically impact the backfield, all right? So as we watch this rep here, right? We're looking at this guard or this DT here, right? Dramatically impacting a play, right? Can't even make a cut, right? He's almost at the mesh, right? That's beautiful. That's exactly what we want. Now selfishly, go make the freaking tackle too. How much that guy weigh, Coach? That guy, that year, weighed 230 pounds. <laughs> 230 pounds. The year before he was 225, right? 
So you just got to want to do it. You got to have guys with great feet and Ben got to want to do it. All right. So as we look at this clip, right, he's playing underneath this guy's pads. Great hand, pad level, right? Great hands, right? He's steering. He's keeping his hips over the top while he's getting knockoff, right? Ball just got handed to the running back and we're in his shit right now, right? That's awesome. That's beautiful. That's when you're going to get tackle for losses, tackle at the line of scrimmage. Linebacker's going to rally. Safeties are going to be able to rally, all right? And again, we're constricting gaps. We're hiding gaps. When you get knockoff, right, you can cheat numbers and bonus. Five Thank you, coach. All right, next clip here. Right now we're going to be in a shade, okay? And this is awesome. That is literally phased or rip retrace. We just worked that drill. We just watched it, all right? It's going to happen on pretty much every rep. Okay, we want knockoff. This is extreme. Again, he gets about three yards, right? And his gap technically is on that side of the center, but he keeps his hips over the top. I want him to make that tackle over here. He should make that tackle over here, right? That's rip retrace. We work that all the time, okay? I want him to be able to make that tackle, right? But again, we're making him cut in the backfield, right? So let's watch how many cuts the running back takes. One. Two, three, just cross the line of scrimmage. That's awesome. That's extra time for our guys to fly around, right? Rally to the ball. When we get knockoff, we talk about one yard knockoff. Again, those are two extreme ones, right? Those are three, four, five yards of knockoff. If we get a yard, we get six inches. That's a win, right? We're playing on their side of the line of scrimmage, all right? This is another good one. Right, a little less knockoff, but again, pad level. Notice we get him in that reverse C, right? His shoulders are behind his heels. We're going to win that rep. And again, well, let's go to the tight view here. This is rip retrace right here. Now, we need to do a better job as a D line of actually ripping, right? That's an emphasis for us this year, right? Get off of blocks. So I need to see him rip, but that's rip retrace right there. Right, got him on his heels, playing in the backfield. That's a beautiful job, right? He's able to play two gaps, hips are over the top. Okay, this, I'm gonna watch this from the wide. Okay, so we talked about protecting our teammates, right? All three of these linebackers are gonna be unblocked on this, on this clip, right? That's awesome. Not one lineman worked up to a linebacker. If you can get that, you're going to, again, you're going to be a happy man, right? And then let's look from the tight. We talked about restricting gaps, right? No vertical run lanes. Make the ball run east and west. Not a lot of grass to run in in there, is there? Right? It's awesome. No vertical run lanes. Make the ball bounce east and west, right? Unblocked linebackers. Obviously, we don't get the result we want here, right? We need to make that tackle. But that's the idea. Ball's got to bounce all the way back to the D gap with two unblocked linebackers sitting there waiting for him. That's beautiful. And again, we're not getting three yards of knockoff there. We're getting six inches, right? And we're restricting gaps. We're doing our job. That's awesome. That's beautiful. Okay, let's watch from the tight on this one. Okay, we can hide things when we get knockoff. Okay, so let's watch these two guys. They kind of get their butts kicked. Well, we get some knockoff here with this guy, and we hide that. Again, we're making him make cuts in the backfield. We're making him make decisions sooner than he wants to make them. All right? Again, we get knockoff. He feels that guy in his lap as he takes the mesh. And again, we're getting our butt kicked over here. Probably want, should have kept it front side. He might have scored. But instead, he's cutting it back to our two unblocked guys. All right? That's an awesome job. And then again, he, he, he's got his combo block. He's trying to rip retrace. We just got to keep our feet on it. He gets himself there eventually. I'll start going a little bit faster here, okay? But again, another good example of knockoff, right? Running back can't get past the line of scrimmage, right? Runs right into his old lineman. And then again, we got rip retrace right here. Beautiful. Playing in their backfield. Tackle the line of scrimmage. That's exactly what we're looking for. Again, vertical knockoff, running to the back of his old lineman, two yards. OK, 
Again, this isn't the result we want, right? We need to make that tackle for a one yard gain, okay? But that's not what he wants, right? We're giving this guy time to show up. We're giving other guys time to show up and get off blocks, right? But that's beautiful. That's awesome knockoff. Coach's mouse is driving me crazy. <laughs> All right, so it's not just a DT thing. Our DNs get involved on in it too. All right, our DNs get involved as well. All right, so let's see. We get in our six technique. We're taking him vertical, playing on his side of the line of scrimmage. Quarterback run. They add an extra hat. Well, let's hide some gaps. Let's cheat, right? Let's bonus our numbers, all right? We get vertical knockoff, right? They want to give us one-on-one -on -one block. We'll take that all day, all right? Tackle in the backfield. So this is stuff all of our D linemen, doesn't matter, DT, D end. We're all going to be in these situations, right? We want knockoff from all positions, okay? It's a great job by those guys. Again, we need to rip and get off that block, right? We don't want to hang on it and just reach, right? Don't arm tackle, rip, get your body behind it. Again, watching this guy here, DNs are doing it too, right? Get vertical, can't get to the D gap, right? Now rip, retrace, we need to make that tackle, right? We impact the play, we slow him down, but let's make that tackle in the backfield. All right, it's a great job by that young man. Okay, we talk about two different types of base blocks when I'm a five technique. I can get an inside step base block or I can get a reach base block, okay? When we get inside step base block, we wanna do what we call anchor, all right? It's the same concept. I still wanna knock him off. Again, it might not be vertical, but I'm knocking him off, right? I'm 45, maybe even less than 45, but I wanna constrict gaps and my feet better be grabbing grass. So again, we get, a, we get an inside step base block, let's condense the gap, right? We cheated numbers. There's nowhere for that guy to run front side, right? That's beautiful. Right, that's an awesome job. That's an inside step base block. Right, we always want to be knocking off and restricting gaps. Now we get a reach base block. Okay, the biggest thing that you'll find is when D linemen panic and try to fly out to a gap, what do gaps do? They freaking open up, right? So the start of this clip by 99 is really good. Right, I get a reach block. I'm a C gap defender. Big deal, keep my hips over the top, knock him back, right? I'll hide the C-gap with the tackle's butt. Keep taking him vertical, make him cut to the B-gap. Sorry, it's new technology. Right, take him vertical, Make him run to the B gap. If he wants to go to the C gap, he's going to have to lose two yards to get there. Again, giving us time to rally and show up. Okay, so really good job by him until he panics, right? He panics and gets outside. What happens to the B gap? Opens up, runs right in it. That should be his tackle all day, right? Don't be anxious. Keep knocking him off till you know where the ball is. All right, now still good play. Still tackles him for a two yard gain. Good job but I'm, I want more, right? Get the tackle yourself, tackle for loss. All right, so those are the two different blocks we'll get, okay? Again, six technique, we got pin pull now. All right, he's a C-gap defender. Notice how we're affecting the puller, okay? Puller's having trouble getting around, right? We're condensing this gap here front side. The other puller can't get to our backer, right? On paper, I'm a C-gap defender. I'm knocking off that tight end. Keep the hips square, now I'm able to add in, make a tackle in the D gap, right? I'm cheating gaps, I'm bonusing numbers, right? It's beautiful. Again, I get a reach block, I'm in a five technique. Knock it back, I just took on two dudes, that's a win for the defense. I'd like to see him keep grabbing grass, don't stop feet. If he keeps knocking that off, he makes that tackle or he makes the running back bubble. But again, right, we're elongating the play. We're letting linebackers, safeties flow to the ball. Again, quarterback run. Let's try to cheat some numbers. Picking up pullers, getting knockoff. 
Playing in their backfield. Beautiful. Another guy, right? That dude's maybe 220 pounds, maybe 215 on a good day, right? We don't got to get a ton of knockoff. We just got to get about six inches, right? We're taking up three dudes there, right? We're going to be able to cheat numbers. We're going to get people flowing to the ball. That's what we want. That's perfect. And right here, steer, keep my hips over the top, ball commits outside, now I'll go find it. He might flare the hips just a little bit there, but I like him keeping the hips over the top. It's a good job. A little bit of knockoff goes a lot of long way. All right, anybody got any questions? All good? All right. Yep, if you want my contact info, there it is. I can send you this presentation as well. All right, thank you.